What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Toya, and I am your favorite travel agent as well as a Carnival Cruise Specialist. Now, today we are going to get into how to plan your first cruise. What are the things that you look for? What are the things that you're supposed to do? What are some things that you're not supposed to do? Whether that's going to be a cruise for yourself or whether that's going to be a cruise for your client. So check it out. So the very first thing that you need to do when planning your cruise is going to be one, do your research, okay? You have to do your research and then you have to figure out where's the boat even leaving from, okay? So what I mean by that is when you do your research, let's just say you got to figure out where you want to go, okay? Do you want to go to somewhere where it's cold, like Alaska? Or do you want to go somewhere tropical, you know, like... Um, Jamaica, okay? You got to figure out where it is that you want to go because depending on your destination is going to depend on what cruise line you want to go to, okay? For instance, you say, okay, hey, I want to go ahead and I want to go to Jamaica, okay? Now you're searching up Jamaica. Now you need to also figure out, okay, well, I want to go to Jamaica, but where do I want to leave from? You got to figure out which port to even leave from. So once you find your destination, okay, hey, boom, I wanna go to Jamaica. Then you gotta figure out your cruise line, okay? Does Carnival go to Jamaica? Does, you know, another cruise line go to Jamaica? And once you figure out which cruise line you wanna go, go with, then you can go with figuring out which departing city you want to depart from, okay? So of course, the example that I'm gonna use is gonna be Carnival. So I want to go to Jamaica, I'm going to do Carnival Cruise Lines, but now I need to figure out, okay, based off of the location where I am, where are the different departing port ports that Carnival basically pulls out of, okay? And you got to figure out, okay, so I'm in the West, I'm in the East Coast, I'm sorry. So I'm located in the East Coast. So, okay, now I got to figure out, do I want to leave from New York? Do I want to leave from Virginia? Do I want to leave from, you know, anywhere in Florida? I got to figure out what is on the East Coast where I live at in order for me to get on a Conroe Cruise boat. Like, you can't just go any and everywhere to hop on a boat that's going to take you to Jamaica. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so once you find your departing cruise port, then that's your basic. Like, that's your foundation. You already have your destination of where you want to go. You already have your cruise line or the cruise lines that you want to work deal with. And then you already have your departing city. So now you already know where you have to go to get on the boat. Now, going into the fourth thing. The fourth thing that you need to do, y'all, is figure out and compare prices. You got to compare prices. So even though you have a basics of, okay, hey, I want to do carnival, but now you got to figure out, okay, well, how much is this going to be? Because if I leave out of Miami, going to Jamaica, it's going to be different if I leave from New York. So you got to compare prices. You got to compare deals. You got to compare different ships. You know what I'm saying? So like, let's just say, for instance, that you are traveling on the Carnival Celebration. Okay, you got to figure out what does this ship have to offer? You already know that, okay, hey, it, you know, it is going to the destination that you wanted to go to. You already got your cruise line, but now you have to figure out and say, okay, well, what does this ship even have to offer? Does this ship have family feud and deal or no deal? Because some other ships don't, you know? And so you have to look at the ship. Don't just pick the cruise line and pick the destination and say, okay, hey, I'm good. No, look at the boat and look at the specific entertainment. Look at the different dining options. If you have kids traveling, look at the different activities and programs that they have for kids. You know, look at the different, um, does it have a roller coaster? Like the Carnival Celebration has a roller coaster on it. Do you like roller coasters? If so, then you can go with that boat. You know, if you love roller coasters, but you get on a boat that doesn't have it, you know, or you're thinking that it has it, but then you get disappointed because it doesn't have it. Like you have to do research and figure out what's what. Once you find that cruise line, now you have to dig all deep into it. You got to 
find out the basics. And I would say find out the basics with your ship. So now that you have your destination, you have your cruise line, and you have the port that you are leaving out of, now go ahead and book. Go ahead and book your cruise, okay? Go ahead and book your cruise. Now, once you book your cruise, you're gonna have two options. One, you need to figure out, are you going to add your gratuities? And then the second thing that you need to figure out is, okay, hey, am I going to add um, vacation protection? Now, in reference to the gratuities, so basically the gratuities is going to go to things like, you know, the people, your stewardess. So the people that's going to come clean your room, give you, you know, new towels, clean the bathroom, make up your bed. It also go to, you know, just different other people that's on the boat, the people that's serving you, the dining crew. Like it's, it's, it's going to go to the crew members, basically. That's the gratuities. I personally like to pay my gratuities up front. And the reason being is because when I person go on, on a boat, I'm going on a cruise, like I don't want to have to try to make sure I have enough money set aside for gratuities. I like to just go ahead and get that done, get it out of the way. Um, so it's done, you know, I'm done with it. Now, some people like to tip on top of the gratuities. Now, sometimes I do that. It just depends, you know, of course, on the service. The reason why I sit up here and I give them extra tip, I mean, because, hey, why not? You know, like the gratuities that you pay up front, it basically gets split with the whole crew members. But when I give somebody a personal tip, that's like, hey, this is from me. You know, like, yes, you're getting a share of a gratuity from, you know, everybody else, but you've taken care of me for these past four, five, six, seven, eight days and even cruises that go up to 14 days. You know, you've taken the time out to make sure that my cabin is clean, secured. You know, hey, this is a personal experience and tip from me. You get what I'm saying? And so that's just me. Some people do it, some people don't. It's totally up to you. So that's that when it comes to gratuities. Now, your vacation protection. This particular video, I won't go into the specific details in reference to all of what the vacation protection plan covers. But in general, I will definitely just say, I think it's very important to go ahead and get um, vacation protection because if anything happens to you, let's just say prior to you going on your cruise. So if you have to cancel for anything and you do have vacation protection, um, I believe, you know, you can get like a certain uh, percentage back um, if you do have the vacation protection in place. If anything else happens like while you're on board, if you get sick and things of that sort and you do have the vacation protection, it can cover those things. Okay, so now you have already booked your cruise, you've already paid your vacation protection, you've already added your gratuities. Now it's time to say, okay, do I want excursion? And so the good thing that I like about when you go on Carnival's website is once you put in like your booking number, all that good stuff, you can filter by um the destination that you're going to be going to so for example if i'm going to grand turk and that's going to be on day number three then i can click on day number three and it's going to give me all of the excursions and activities that is offered um in grand turk on that specified day that we would be you know in that port you can add that to the um to your cart now one thing i will say is when you are adding your excursions you are not adding your excursions to your full balance you when you do your excursions it's totally separate okay if i say hey i go to grand turk and i want to do horseback riding okay because i personally actually did horseback riding when i did go to grand turk but anyway go ahead and you book it and go ahead and just pay for it right then and there you can't make payments on the actual excursions you just could add to cart same thing if you want like the drink package. Um, they have several different drink packages, but typically the most popular ones are the um, the cheers package and then you have the bubbles. The bubbles package is basically just for like juices and soda. Then you have the cheer package that includes that and it includes liquor. So now you got everything booked. You got your excursions booked. You got all your activities. You got your drink package. Like everything is booked and paid for and you are ready to go. Okay. You are ready to go pack your bags, baby, and head to your destination port. Okay. Once you get to the port, you have to ensure, actually, let's kind of back up. 
ensure that you have all your proper, I should say travel uh, documents, okay? You wanna just make sure and you have to research and you have to figure out like, okay, you know, do I need my passport? Do I need just a, a valid ID and a birth certificate? Now, I always suggest and recommend that you have a passport and also ensure that your passport does not expire six months um, after you have traveled. Also, in reference to your travel documents, please, 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 I beg of you, please, print out your boarding pass, okay? Your boarding pass is gonna be your pass that you use to basically get on the boat. And they do not take digital copies. Save yourself some time, save your Self, some some headache <laughs> like stress all that good stuff please go ahead and print your boarding pass out so you can already have that so you can show them they can stamp it and you're good to go and then y'all please make sure that you print out your luggage tags now you will not have access to your luggage tags or your boarding pass until roughly two weeks ahead of time and again i'm specifically roughly talking about carnival okay um other cruise lines i'm not sure exactly what their reference is um, but again, that goes back to, you know, all your research. Your luggage tags basically will have your, um, the cruise line, the name of the ship, and then I want to say it has your room number and I believe your name. And you want to make sure that you have that. Get yourself some, um, some plastic luggage tags where you can fold the paper luggage tag and put it inside of the plastic luggage tag and wrap it, you know, and, and put it on your suitcase um, because let's just say if it's raining or as they're, you know, um, putting all the bags together, you want to just make sure that it's secured on your luggage so it doesn't fall off and then you can't find your luggage and all this other stuff. And then last but not least, also going back to the beginning, if you, in the process of when you are doing your research, you also want to make sure that you double check and figure out, okay, hey, do I have to fly to my destination? Um, do I need to get a hotel? Um, do I need a rental car? Those are also other things that you need to figure out as well. So if I'm going down to Florida and I want to catch, you know, the ship from Miami, I need to figure out, okay, how am I going to get down to Miami? Am I going to drive myself? If I drive myself, am I going to rent a car? Am I going to use my car? How long is, you know, how long is the drive? Um, Am I going to stay in a hotel? You know, what hotel am I going to choose? How far is the hotel from the cruise port? Um, you know, and then if you're going to fly, then you need to figure out, okay, well, now I got to get flight prices and I need to figure out which airline is best for me. And some airlines don't fly into Miami. Some airlines only fly into certain cities. So now you got to figure out and research, you know, which um airline fly into you know this departing city typically i fly to my destination and typically i will go ahead of time and when i say ahead of time at least 24 hours in advance um i believe i have already done a video in reference to why you should leave for your cruise 24 hours in advance so if you haven't seen that video make sure you go check that out um so once you do your research with all of that with the cruise line um, you know, your destination, figuring out where you want to go, figuring out what port it leads from, making sure you have all of your travel documents, researching the flight, the hotel, all of that. Finally, it's your day. You're ready to get on that cruise and have fun, okay? And like I said, once you take that cruise, it's okay to try a different boat, you know, try different destinations. And even if you want to try a, a different cruise line, so what? Try a different cruise line. You want to be able to explore so you can have the experience from yourself versus getting experience and, in, 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 you know, different stories from other people because everybody has their own opinion. You, your taste might not be the same taste as somebody else's, you know, when it comes to traveling or when it comes to a specific cruise line or when it comes to dining options or when it comes to activities. So take the time out for yourself to explore those things so now you have your own personal experience and then when somebody asks you hey how did you like carnival cruise lines oh hey how did you like icon you know of the seas how did you like can you can you give me the pros and the cons you'll be able to do that from a personal experience versus trying to get stories from this travel agent or get stories from you know this cousin or pulling stories from everybody to make your own story to sound 
like something that you're not okay um so and it's it's okay you know it's okay if you don't have all the answers but i feel as though that people are more respectful of you when you're just giving them your honest opinion and when they come to me and say hey have you traveled on a different cruise line and i'm like no i haven't you know it, it is what it is not to say that i don't want to but i'm not going to sit up here and make things up in reference to a different cruise line just so i can get a sale or just so they can use me as their travel agent like i'm not doing that you know be you be who you are be honest and even if it's a cruise line that you're not necessarily familiar with it goes back to doing your research being you know honest with your client and say hey i don't know much about it however give me some time let me do a couple of researches okay and do your research and then present that information to your client you never know you still may be able to get bookings just because you haven't traveled that particular cruise line. Needless to say, don't sell yourself short just because you don't know everything. You're not going to know everything. Like I'm literally still learning things about Carnival as of today. So those are the things that you need to do when you are planning your first cruise. Yes, there is a lot of information. It's a lot of research that you have to do to be able to, like I say, either one, book your very own first cruise or number two, be able to book a cruise for your client. In the meantime, again, if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. If you have travel on Carnival or if this is your first cruise, you know, that's getting ready to come up. Let me know what cruise line are you going on? Um, you know, what's the name of your ship? What dates are you, you know, planning to go? Where are you going? You know, drop those things in the comments so we can definitely, you know, stay connected and you can share your experience when it comes to your um, cruise, okay? Please make sure that you guys give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure that you subscribe to our channel for more tips on cruises, travel hacks, different vlogs that I'll be doing, all that good stuff, y'all, okay? And until next time, always, I'll talk to y'all later.